everybody, welcome back to Messy Vegan Baker. I'm Christina, and this week we are going to be continuing our, really should have a name for this by now, I guess just the vegan substitute exploration or something, I don't know. Um, if you have a name for me, leave a comment down below as to what this series should be called because I don't know. For the last few weeks, I've been trying out vegan egg substitutes for chocolate chip cookies, and I feel like I got most of them. There are still some other replacements that could also work really well that I didn't try. This week, I decided we are gonna move it on over to, hold on, vegan butter replacements. I got really bored of making chocolate chip cookies and I have a ton of them in my freezer that I need to give away slash eat up. <laughs> so I decided we were going to make my life slightly more complicated because why not? And we're going to be making chocolate chocolate chip cookies or whatever they're called. Yeah, chocolate chocolate chunk cookies or double chocolate cookies, whatever. So uh, this is from Mark Pittman's How to Bake Everything, <laughs> shocker. But I'm 99% sure I used this for the hot chocolate cookie recipe, which I will link up below. I'll link the video to that here. This will be its own blog post, which I will link down below for you. So check it out. First things first. So vegan butter substitutes. Again, I'm not going to be using a lot of the brands that are out there because as we know, Earth Balance is amazing and um, what are they, Croc Country, Country Croc, whatever, they have some really, there's a ton of amazing vegan butters out there and maybe one day I will do the same thing as the egg replacers and kind of do all of the commercial ones and put them against each other because I feel like that's more fair. Also, I would have had to go out to the store and I was too lazy to go, so I figured why not just find things around the house? So that's what I did. Um, so the next two episodes will be um, more plant-based stuff again, just because A, you might have this around your house and I like the fact that you could go through your pantry and be like, yeah, I have this, so I'll just use this instead of like having to spend more money on vegan butter because it is pricier than regular butter, unfortunately, but it is getting better. So today we are going to be using coconut oil, which I realize kind of, I don't know, I've used it a lot and I've had a lot of successes, so I feel like it doesn't really count as as an experiment, but I have to pit it against everything else. So uh, we're doing coconut oil, peanut butter, which also you do like half peanut butter, half oil. And then we're just going to be using oil. And then this is the one that I thought was the craziest, beans. What? I know, it's crazy. I didn't realize this until I was doing research and this popped up and I was like, that's super cool. So according to the research, Great Northern beans are the best because I guess they're the most neutral and if we were to do chocolate chip cookies, they wouldn't show up or like change the color of the cookies. Um, but you could use any kind of beans, it sounds like. So I could use black beans, which I debated, but we have these and my family goes through a ton of black beans on a daily basis, just eating them in meals. So I figured I would just save those for other occasions and use these. Like last time, I'll talk you how to talk you through how to make all of the eggs and then how to make the cookies and then we will compare. So without further ado, let's get baking. Okay, so I have the first batch of the cookies baked and in front of me and I finally actually labeled them so I know for sure which one is which. All right, so for all of the vegan butters, most of them are really easy to use. It's just the bean one that is the most intense, but that one's not that bad. So for the coconut one, as you know, just substitute one for one. I did half of the recipe, which would be, so I needed a half a cup of butter or one stick. So I did half a cup of coconut oil. Again, I think one of my issues was I didn't it wasn't quite soft enough. It was a little hard. So I had a few lumps in there, so that was my bad. Um, so make sure it is soft and very creamy. So you just measure that out and put it in there and ta-da, there you go. For the oil one, use any kind of neutral tasting oil. So canola oil, grapeseed. I don't really know other ones, <laughs> but I typically always have canola oil, so I just use that one. Um, and then I just substituted one for one. Then you just dump it in there and go on your merry way. 
So that one's easy too. And then I did the peanut butter and oil one. So I was super excited about this. I know that it'll probably give it a peanut buttery flavor and that's why I'm excited about this. But basically I needed a half cup of butter. So I did a fourth cup of peanut butter and a fourth cup of oil. And then I just mixed it together until it was a nice homogenous mixture. And then I added in the sugar. But again, that one's super easy too. And then the last one, which I personally was shocked that you could do this and thought it was the coolest thing ever, beans. And all you have to do is I measured out about three fourths of a cup ish. And then I used an immersion blender. You can use a blender. You can just use a fork if you really are so inclined to just mash it and make sure it is a nice smooth texture and measure it out to a half cup or a cup or however much you're using and put it in the mixture and mix it up. Make sure you drain the beans out really well. All of these vegan butters replacements, the amounts are gonna be for one stick of butter or a half cup. For the cookies, if you are using a vegan egg that needs to be made ahead of time, go ahead and do that. And then you are also going to make slash melt your chocolates ahead of time. So I did this last time too. I have Hershey's cocoa powder. They have a recipe on the backs that helps you make unsweetened chocolate, which is nice. So you do like a bit of the Hershey's cocoa powder, a little bit of the oil, and then you whisk it together. And then I set it aside. And then I melted some dark chocolates or you can use semi-sweet chocolate, whatever you want. I melted that down. And then I just combined it to help it cool down. And also then I only had to pour in one bowl of chocolate. So yeah, take whatever vegan butter you're using, put that in, put the granulated sugar in, put the brown sugar in. You're gonna mix that or cream it until it is a nice smooth, creamy looking consistency. And then you can add the egg in and I put the vanilla in and I whip it at like medium speed, usually just to help it really emulsify and become that light, fluffy, homogenous texture that you're looking for. Once it looks like it's a nice texture, pour in the chocolate and you're gonna whip that again until it's a really good mixture. Everything looks evenly distributed. And then you're gonna stop the mixer, put in the salt, baking soda, and flour. And then you're gonna mix it on the slowest setting you have, or just gently mix it if you're doing it by hand until it is halfway combined. And then I just added in the chocolate chips at that point and then just let it mix until it was just combined. And then I put it in a bowl, covered it, and put it in the fridge. You can put it in the fridge for 30 minutes or up to a day. You don't have to put these in the fridge, I realized, in his recipes. So if you wanted to, wanted to, you could just bake them right then and there. But I put them in the freezer because I just find it's easier for me to make all of the doughs and then bake them at the same time, then turn the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you're going to scoop your cookies out onto ungreased baking sheets. And yeah, I used a tablespoon scooper. Use whatever size you want. And then you're gonna bake them for about eight to 10 minutes or until the bottoms are just slightly darker and you will notice it. So just keep a very close eye on that. So now it's time for the taste test. Uh, I'm just gonna go in order. So coconut, that's really good. So these ones are definitely on the drier side. If you find it's drier and you do want more of a cakey cookie because this is nice, but it's definitely not cakey. It's more like crumbly. Then just add a little bit of vegan milk, like a teaspoon at a time until it's a consistency that you want, but I wouldn't recommend adding more than a tablespoon of milk because that will probably make them too runny and then they lace and it's just not good. So now I'm gonna do the oil one. Mm, that one's really good too. I, again, honestly, there's like no difference. There's no taste difference. There's no texture difference. They're both crunchy on the outside and kind of moist, mostly crumbly on the inside, but I'm not mad at them. Um, they also didn't really spread out at all which I find interesting. I mean, I guess essentially they're both oils. I just wasn't sure if coconut oil, which is more solidified at room temperature and like liquid oil would be different, but I guess not. So that's a relief. All right, let's try the peanut butter one. I'm the most excited for this. And I'm gonna eat this one that I tried to grab too soon off the pan and it got a little sad. <laughs> Ooh, mm-hmm. Just as I figured slash was hoping you can taste the peanut butter in this. So if you want a vegan butter that doesn't add flavor, coconut or oil or maybe beans, we'll see in a minute, but peanut butter, oh my gosh, because now these are like chocolate peanut butter cookies. Just makes them a million times better in my world. That is a hit for me. It also has a crunchy outside and moist, kind of crumbly interior. So 
So far, these haven't like changed the batter at all, which is pretty interesting. Oh, now the bean one. Hmm, it's good. Uh, so this one's definitely cakier or fudgier in the middle, but the outside is nice and crisp again because it's a little wetter. But it's really good. I don't taste the beans. Be really curious to have somebody else taste it and see if they noticed it. Yeah, I feel like it's. I don't necessarily taste the beans, but there's a little bit more savory flavor in there. So maybe just like up the chocolate, but other than that, it's really good. I don't think people would really realize what was happening if they didn't know it was beans, but I think they would be like, hmm, interesting aftertaste. So just keep that in mind. Overall, I think they turned out really well. Um, I think the peanut butter one's my favorites just because of the extra flavor, but in terms of just making a vegan substitute to make a cookie taste the same, if that makes sense. I definitely recommend coconut or just oil, which is cool. My preference is still coconut just because, I don't know, I really don't know why. Maybe we've just been through more together. So, you know, just that bond connection. So that is my overall thoughts. Hold on, I have to make sure I have enough time. Okay, my camera's about to die. So thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Um, I will have the link to the blog post down below, so go check that out. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and leave a comment if you haven't done any of those yet. I hope you guys learned something and or were entertained and I will see all of you lovely humans next time. Bye. I've been trying out, <sighs> let's just start over. That was like Loki a train wreck, but it's fine. We are chugging through because <laughs> then you like increase the protein and and decrease the fat and increase the fiber and la 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 da 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 do 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 hello okay oh i forgot to say this oh, i'm a mess okay